Hi, Dr. Scott Beyer here, and today I'm gonna go over a very important connection between your gut and your thyroid gland. And this might not be one that is talked about too much, but it's a really important one, and that is really the emphasis of, of stomach acidity and how it can impact normal, healthy thyroid physiology. Now, um, what happens is, is our stomach should be extremely acidic. It should be nice and acidic so we can break down food to ultimately absorb it, okay? And uh, when we see decreased stomach acidity these are the people who like eat a whole bunch of food or big protein containing meals and they feel like they have that food baby for an hour or two afterwards like their stomach is just distended or they might uh, you know have so much distension that they're they're belching up or burping up certain types of foods and it can cause things like acid reflux or heartburn or other abdominal symptoms that's typically what we'll see with decreased stomach acidity and one of the things that our stomach is really really important for is to be able to break break down proteins, okay? And how our uh, stomach breaks down proteins is via the hydrochloric acid in it. So if we don't have enough stomach acidity to be able to break down protein, that means we'll see an overall decreased protein absorption. So when it comes to uh, protein in our bodies, one of the more important protein structures are called globulins. And this can be measured on, on blood work. But uh, globulins have a bunch of different function in the body. One of them is like for our immune system, like immunoglobulins. But uh, other ones are like for regulating hormones. And thyroid hormone is one of them. So we have these things called thyroid binding globulins. And you guys may have even heard of this before. But if we have a decreased uh, protein absorption and one of those proteins is globulins, overall we may see a decrease in overall thyroid binding globulin. So what this means is when it comes to hormones, we have uh, both protein bound, so they're like locked up, and then we have free fractions of the hormones. And some of the, like if you've ever gotten your, your blood work done, your thyroid hormone checked and they measured total T4, they're measuring both protein bound or locked up and the free fraction. So there's other things that you can measure called like free T4 or free T3 that tells you the free fraction. So in this picture here, the ones that have these little uh, C shapes on them, those are the ones that are bound up to proteins. And these can't really enter the cell. Okay, so if we have a decrease in these binding proteins or these binding globulins, that means we'll have an increase in the free fractions of hormones or thyroid hormone. So what happens is, is if we have a bunch of this, this free thyroid hormone floating around, what happens is, is if this is our cell, for every hormone in our body, there's a Goldilocks range, meaning that you know our, our body doesn't want hormones too high, it doesn't want them too low either, and thyroid hormone is, is no exception. So if we have a free, increased free fractions of thyroid hormones, what our cell does is on our cell, we have these little uh, receptors where thyroid hormone can dock onto. And if we have too much of the free hormone floating around, what our cell will do is it will literally start to retract some of these receptors and we'll see a decreased amount of thyroid hormone receptor on that. So what does that mean for the entryway of thyroid hormone into that cell? Well, it means that thyroid, uh, our cells grow very, very resistant to thyroid hormone and they develop something called thyroid hormone resistance, okay? All perpetuated because of decreased stomach acidity. So our stomach acidity is so very important for normal healthy thyroid hormone function. Now, what are some things that can cause decreased stomach acidity? Well, this can be a whole different topic for another time, but this is things like, you know, there's a little bug called H. pylori, there's simple nutritional deficiencies, zinc is a really big one, there's certain types of autoimmunities that actually attack the, the inner lining of the stomach, um, there are medications like proton pump inhibitors, and then paradoxically, um, there's this hormone called thyroxine, which is commonly referred to as T4, and that plays a huge role in our stomach acidity. So if you have decreased T4, it can perpetuate this whole thyroid resistance loop. So if you found this interesting, um, or if, if you're wanting to learn more, you can always visit our Facebook page at Integrative Brain and Body, or our website, ibrainandbody.com, to see more of these videos or more of our blog articles on the topic. I'm Dr. Scott Beyer. Hope you learned something today, and have a nice day.